that R is given by this. And uh, in three-dimensional space, R is equal to under root x squared plus y squared plus z squared. But this is originally given by our Indian sage network. And here you can see that how to measure the distance in three-dimensional space. Now for one dimension, and if we imagine a creature who has got just one, as an, one sense and, and sense of just one direction, then you know it cannot see the point uh, just uh, uh, side by because it has no sense of two dimension. So one dimension is not reality. It is, uh, it is half reality or partial reality. So we need two dimensions. So two dimensions means surface, area. Area is um, reality and uh, no, length is reality. So this is area and it can move here and there, but it cannot see in space. It cannot see stars and, and uh, skies and mountains and trees and because it has no, uh, no sense of three dimension. And if one is standing there, it can see only the impression of the feet of that person, but not the whole person. So two dimensions are not reality. We want three dimensions. And then Newton actually used Euclidean three-dimensional geometry and time as parameter outside and generated the whole dynamics. That we call the Newtonian dynamics. And it is very, very, uh, appeared to be very real. So it has been very successful. But it failed in you know, high velocities and strong gravity. And therefore, Einstein needed to have fourth dimension. And next one, please. So Einstein generated the fourth dimensional universe, taking time as the you know, fourth dimension. But time is measured in second, and length is measured in you know, meter. And so one has to convert you know, time into you know, length. And that can be done by velocity of light. Because it requires universal constant, not ordinary constant, should be universal constant. And that you know, it should have dimension and units of velocity so that distance upon time into time will convert this into length. So actually, this is the fourth dimensional equation where you know, uh, time is converted into, you know, into length because ct is there. And it is negative because otherwise, you know, when distance is zero, this becomes imaginary, so it has to be taken minus and not plus. So this is no spatial theory of relativity. And it could explain us that energy is equivalent to mass and length contraction and time dilation and that, you know, as the mass gets velocity, you know, uh, mass is increasing and uh, electricity is nothing but magnetism and uh, time is nothing but space. They are related. So all these were explained by Einstein in spatial theory of relativity, taking, you know, the um, three-dimensional Euclidean space and time. But then it is not full reality because he took you know, the region where there is no force acting in a shell frame of reference. So he needed to have you know, the non-Euclidean non geometry and with that help he generated you know, general theory of relativity. Here you can see the general distance formula actually given by Bodhaya you know, and then Pythagoras. And then this is the Einstein's equation. On this side, there is whole geometry. And on this side, just matter, energy, everything. So here he joined the matter and field with the geometry. It means the space-time geometry. And in Upanishadas, it is written that everything comes from space and into space it returns. Space is beginning and end of everything. Here we can realize that. But however, this equation has two solutions. One is Einstein's solution of material body, material world, and second is empty space, de shutter universe. So now we can see that here, that is, is it possible that universe have no fifth dimension? Is it that the universe has only four dimensions? That one has to prove that universe has only four dimensions and not, not five. But we cannot prove that. And the, we can assume that universe has five dimensions. But what should be the first or fifth dimension? Because dimension has got for qualification. That it should be independent, x, y, z, space, and time all are independent. 
and throughout the universe it should present. So what, what is that? We can say that mass is such a body, because mass is nothing but energy. So throughout present, so one can take mass as the fifth dimension, but then mass measured in kg has to be converted into length. And here is the, you know, that constant, uh, g upon c square, which, is, which has so much small, you know, magnitude, and it converts, you know, the mass into to length. So this is the fifth dimension of the universe. And here we can see that fifth dimension is just like potato and slight germination, slight germination. Because in Einstein theory, what is happening? That if we take x one, one meter, y one meter, z one meter, then ct will be 300 million meter, so big. And therefore, the space, you know, all the three dimensions of space are subspace, and only time will be seen. But here, the dimension of fifth, you know, mass has got, you know, just small, 10 to the power minus 29. So that mass dimension is 10 to the power minus 29 smaller, and then the space dimension is 30 million times smaller. So this is just, just you can imagine the universe. Here you can see that by taking the fifth dimension, we can just move along mass direction, and then we can find next one that the, you know, if we consider the whole mass of the universe to, to be 10 to the power 53 kg, then we can arrive at the age of the universe 14 billion years. If we take, you know, the age of the universe 14 billion years, we can find the mass of the whole universe. So now, we, we just come to this conclusion that we know only the relative truth, absolute truth is known to universal observers. Because there may be six dimensions, but one has to find out what is the six dimension. Then seven, scientists say that there are 11 dimensions of the space, maybe more. So we can't, you know, uh, we can't, uh, you know, determine that. We, we don't know about it. Now we come to the Jainism. That in Jainism, that uh, Jain philosophy, they believe that space and time are real. And then, you know, they describe as astikaya. That space, extended space, which has got, you know, uh, reality. And they say that the uh, whole space, absolute space, is really absolute space and not relative space. In Einstein theory, no space is relative. You, there is no absolute space. But these people, the Jainism says that it is absolute space. Why? They say, they argue that, uh, you know, Maxwell's equations have solution in even vacuum. And that electromagnetic waves are, you know, are present even in vacuum. And also, world has got, universe has got rest mass. So say that there is some residual curvature. Now, just Einstein described whole universe in terms of curvature. Because as you have seen that one, you know, space-time geometry, one, you know, whole matter. So according to Einstein, space behaves like a membrane. And when mass comes into being, it generates curvature. And that is the gravity. And here they say that there is residual curvature, and we can say that there is absolute space. Uh, it means that in earlier what had happened, that there was ether taken as absolute space. But it, it was abolished. But now Jainism says that, you know, the space itself can be taken as ether, and or just a synonym, and it is absolute. Then they, have, they, they say about loka and uh, aloka. That loka, loka akash, is actually the Einstein universe. And alok akash is no decentral universe. And they say that they, one can combine that the, in alok akash, loka akash is embedded. It means that Einstein theory or Einstein universe is embedded in digital empty space. That, you know, Einstein universe is just bubble of energy. And at the, at the boundary, what happens, that absolute temperature T equals zero. And therefore, nothing can move. And therefore, you know, mudgal or you no know, matter, uh, you know, okay, pudgal and matter uh, cannot uh, you know, escape. And they, they uh, picture like this. And uh, there may be some, you know, one has to study it well. And uh, so that uh, we can go into the detail. And secondly, that, uh, um, you, know, you know, in our uh, Vedas, 
it is you no know, Brahman, that is absolute space, infinite. And then with respect to that, everything can be measured. So here, actually, uh, we, we find some point that uh, absolute space can be brought in once again. And because of this argument, but one has to study. And if you have any question, you are free to ask at the end, perhaps. Thank you very much. Now I call upon Dr. Moninder Singh Modgil. He is from Indian Institute of uh, Technology, IIT Kanpur. And he will be making a presentation on novel findings on the true nature of cosmology in view of ancient and modern era. Respected divine brothers and sisters, uh, Dr. Moninder Singh Modgil uh, is a co-author with us, but he's, uh, because of some personal reason, he's not there. But I am Santosh Kaurev. Uh, going to present the novel findings regarding uh, the cosmology in view of ancient and uh, modern era. So according to famous scientist Nikola Tesla, if you wish to understand the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. In other words, if you know the magic of 369, that is energy, frequency, and vibration, it means that universe has three basic energies, six frequencies and nine vibrations. If you understand these three, three things, definitely you will know the real idea about, about real universe. So based on 369, this is the real structure of the universe. So the energies, so this is the physical world where there are six frequencies. Then there is a, a cosmic world. There are three energies. That is conscious unified field, then souls, and third is golden luminous ether that is present in the, that, uh, cosmic world and there is a physical world where there are six frequencies and if the six vibrations from this and three vibrations from energies produces nine vibrations of the universe and based on this this is the unified sacred geometry of the universe so this is the flat earth and flat and stationary earth then there are sun moons and planets stars and galaxies subtlety stars pole star there is a white hole which is a connection between physical world and the cosmic world now, to understand three energies, the first energy is Jiva, that is known as soul, that is observer, conscious quantum spiritual energy, conscious quanta, or being. So we are not this physical body, but we are a metaphysical point of light, which is very subtle, immortal, and eternal, whose Planck's uh, geometry is in the range of 10 to the power minus 35 meters, and energy wave Planck time, time is 10 to the power minus 44. When jiva comes into the body, that is known as birth, and when it leaves the body, it is known as death. While living from the body, jiva extracts the uh, ether energy. And DNA and structure of the body decided on the power of purity of the jiva. And next birth will be decided by the previous, earth, previous birth karmic account. Now, how jiva interacts with the physical body, so that mystery can be solved with the sacred geometry of the jiva. So being that is a jiva through quantum vacuum produces ele electromagnetic biophotons which interacts with the brain microtubules which are present in the neurons. Similar, uh, in this way we can say that our jiva is like a programmer, then our brain is like a supercomputer and human body is like a robot. And jiva has three subtle energies, subtle powers we can say that is mind, intellect and resolves. In mind jiva produces thoughts in intellect, jiva takes the decision, and third are the, that is the impression. So this is the, pro, this is the, we can say, control system of the jiva. So that is the sacred geometry of jiva, and the exact location of jiva, where is jiva in the human brain. So exactly in between the hypothalamus and pituitary, jiva located in that region, and it produces a basic vibrational frequency, with, the, with, with its uh, control system, basically our body, human body is like a machine. And if I want to control any machine, it requires two circuits. One is control circuit and other is power circuit. So control circuit comprises of intellect, resolves, and mind. This is a control system of jiva. And 13 remaining points of that, these are the power system of the jiva. So through 13 power system, <coughs> power of, uh, that is the etheric points, which provides the power to the subtle body of subtle body, and through 13 chak chakras of the subtle body, 
and then 13 from the 13 chakras the 13 systems of the physical body will be controlled by the jiva so this is the actually interaction and this is in the old uh, ancient days that is known as quantum platonic world of wisdom and light so this is the exact geometry of the jiva with this geometry we can definitely give the re uh, how jiva controls the physical body now according to the famous scientist uh, that is uh, famous physicist penrose and his uh, fellow scientist Stuart Hammerhoff uh, that human consciousness is not produced from the brain but it is a vi basic vibrational frequency of very subtle space that is known as quanta and that is nothing but the sacred geometry of quanta which we have seen uh, shown in the previous slide and according to Shakespeare this world is like a stage and we are the actors here uh, actually we came from the cosmic world which is beyond the subtle world and that is known as, in scientific language, it is known as antimatter world. So, according to Sir Isaac Newton, what we know is a drop, and what we don't know is a ocean. So, universe is like this. But if you understand Jiva, and what is a unified conscious field of the universe, definitely you will get the idea of the, uh, exactly how universe is there. So, the famous scientist, uh, that is Albert Einstein, tried for, to. Uh, get the theory of uh, everything that according to him there is a super unification of all the forces and uh, that is present in the universe so he has tried for 30 to 35 years for the theory of everything or which is known as conscious unified field universe according to the dr jane, jane Eglin, so this such field is present in the 10 dimensions of the universe which is the highest quantum vacuum energy and it is a infinite pure silence or pure consciousness we can say and again, again Anthony Garrett Lizzie also developed one E8 model based on this such field should, must be there like this next please and we have find out that which is that field which the scientists are searching for that that is the theory of everything that is the uh, it is in the 10th dimension dimension is nothing but the energy level it is in the 10th energy level and that is the divine sacred geometry of this uh, conscious unified field and these are the different energies produced from the uh, such as gravitational nuclear ether every each and every energy produced from this conscious unified field of the universe and uh, now talk about ether energy that is the sixth element of the cosmic world there are two types of ether one is golden luminous which is in the cosmic world and second is a radiant type of ether and its Planck geometry is in the range of minus 35, which is very subtle. And scientific instruments are only, it is measurement is only in the range of minus 20, 10 to the power minus 20 meters. So that's why they are not accepting the existence of the ether. But complete universe consists of ether element only. That is, in Jain philosophy, it is known as Dravya. And uh, the dark energy, today scientists searching for the dark energy, that is nothing but the ether. And that is the biggest mistake of science that they are not accepting the ether then they will never uh, will uh, get the real idea about the universe so these are the five platonic uh, uh, solids that is fire earth air that these are the nothing but the geometries so ether is a new not new concept for us ether energy was discussed in indian vedic uh, literature as well as greek philosophers talk about it so our old civilization came to know that ether receiving capacity of the earth's core getting reduced. That's why they have constructed uh, pyramid-like structures on the ley line of the earth. And through that, uh, they, the earth was getting, the uh, earth was getting, core was getting the ether energy. And as the time passed, because of misconducts of the human being, we have completely destroyed the uh, ecological balance. And that's why ether receiving capacity of the core of the earth gets reduced and that's why the natural calamities are produced. Next please. So the space that is nothing but ether is a 99.9% and space that is matter, visible matter is only 0.01% and space is creating matter but not matter is not creating space. And uh, please, next please. So that is the highest capacity of the ether. Next. So according to famous scientist Nikola Tesla, the Human alpha waves that are in the range of 6 to 8 hertz and electrical resonance of the earth is also in the same range and that's why there is a uh, resonance because of our consciousness of the jiva and that is known as human resonance, resonance or uh, global resonance that was recorded in global coherence network in the 9 by 11 uh, uh, terrorist attack.
and real structure of the universe is like a yogi which is doing sadhana so the cover of the earth is a root chakra then uh, the flat earth is like yogi's leg then moon sun these are the body parts like heart lungs stomach and the cosmic brain is a that is a upper side and white hole is a crown chakra and pole star is the hypothalamus through the cosmic world ether energy spread into the uh, physical world next please and our system is like yes oh. our uh, universe is like a uh, through pole star actually this universe is like a motor so all galaxies are rotating through the power from the white hole this universe is rotating uh, this is the core of the earth which gets split into the there are that's why we are getting two poles on the earth next please this is the day and night and solar and lunar eclipses on the flat earth there are 200 proofs that is the regarding flat earth so anyone can refer that is earth is flat that is accepted in jain philosophy next please next please deep space missions are never possible because of van allen belt temperature is more than 3000 degrees celsius and there is a cyclic curvature topology that that's why it is not never possible next please these are also some of the reasons why these deep space missions are not possible next i just i will finish it now yes uh, cosmic cycle it consists of four uh, eras there is golden silver copper and iron age so the first is known as lumeria second is atlantis of maria there is uh, so this is this is a cosmic cycle which repeated after 5000 years each uh, era is 1250 years so universe neither be created nor nor be destroyed it can only transform next please uh these are the scientific proof of 5000 years uh, cosmic cycle so regarding future of universe so there is a in the world there is a uh, now people are discussing about the planet x or nibiru that is nothing but the pole star because pole star is on the top and there is a core of the earth and from the golden age there is a magnetic balance between pole star and core of the earth as the time passed at the at the starting of copper age the core of the earth getting discharged because of not getting the ether energy that's why this magnetic balance get collapse and that's why this pole star is now coming near to earth because of magnetic imbalance and that's why that is known as planet x or nimru but what will happen when this planet come near to earth there will be the total quantum changes because this pole star contain highest ether energy that is a golden luminous ether it when it comes near to earth uh, please next please so this is uh, the reason why universe is expanding universe is like a balloon so core is on the lower side and this pole star is pressing to the universe that's why universe is a bulging at the center and when pole star come near to our earth there will be the changes in the quantum changes all the there will be the failure of all the electronic components and there will be the explosion of nu nuclear weapons automatically because of this uh, this highest ether energy next and there will be the starting of the transformation process and uh, then there will uh, total changes in the this world and this seems to be like a destruction but no, it is a transformation and finally last that is the call of time now world is going to change very soon because of the pole star movement of the pole star so now time comes to connect jiva with the conscious unified field of the universe and getting pure for the new era thanks lot and uh, this is the movie which is available in youtube you can watch it polaris star world transformer brahmastra this movie is available online you can see all these whatever we have we have total scientific proofs uh, just shown in the presentation it is in presentation uh, website is also there this is the polaris star world transformer brahmastra you can see it and uh, just confirm all these things we have contact numbers also given on the website so just go through web, uh, in the website we have www.alchemyofgod.com alchemyofgod.com now we move on to the last presentation and is by varsha shah she is from kj somaya center for studies in jainism she will be making a presentation on the myth of space time a comparative approach within the scenario of jain universe and string quantum theory scholars on the dais of the dais and dear friends does a family tree extend forever backward or do its root terminate 
is the cosmos as impermanent as we are? Aristotle, taking the no beginning side, invoked the principle that out of nothing, nothing comes. If the universe could never have gone from nothingness to somethingness, it must have always have existed. For this and other reason, time must stretch eternally into the past and future. Augustine, a Christian theologian, contended that God exists outside, the, outside of space and time, able to bring these constructs into existence. When asked, what was God doing before he created the world? Augustine answered, time itself being part of God's creation, there was simply no before. In recent decades, physicists and mathematicians have asked if space is made of discrete pieces, is it continuous or is it more like a piece of cloth woven out of individual fiber? If we could probe to size scale that was small enough, we would see atoms of space irreducibly, pieces of volume that cannot be broken into anything smaller.